Hi, my name's Mandy and welcome to my YouTube channel, Picty Stitch. This podcast or vlog is all about my crafty things I get up to in my little craft room in the UK. So this includes sewing, knitting, crochet, quilting and just lately a little bit of cross stitch. So I'll talk about that to you later. Okay, so first of all, I've had a real busy week. I intended to upload a vlog last week, but that just didn't happen. But I've been to the opticians because um, I've just restarted a tapestry. I think I showed you this um, on my last vlog and just realised, you know, how poor my eyesight was. So I've had some new glasses. I'm going to pop them on. And these are called, I think they're called bifocals. So you look down for the reading section and then this is more for um, distance. So uh, I'll see how I, I go on with these. Okay. <laughs> I've hurt my finger as well. I've cut that. <laughs> I tried to cut my fringe. And uh, yeah, uh, when I was snipping, I s actually snipped uh, my finger, the flesh on my uh, index finger. So not a good start to the week. So the first things I'm going to show you is just a couple of little stash busting projects. I've got lots and lots of batting left over from when I've made quilts and I just want to get rid of scraps of fabric and um, of my batting. Now it's not so bad when you're quilting and you've got scraps of quilting cotton left because you can all those, always use those up in other quilting projects, no problem. I have a problem though when I've got scraps of fabric left over from my garment makes. So this is actually quilting cotton um, but I mean I'm not going to incorporate this fish fabric in any quilts. It's something I made my partner. So um, I've been making hot water bottle covers. So just undo it i mean it is quite warm now at the moment in england but um not a few weeks ago it was quite chilly so we were still using hot water bottle um now the problem is with me i tend to fill these straight from the kettle so um yeah far too hot to put against your body so i've made these covers i've lined them with just scraps of fabric and it's a great way as well if you've got spare buttons of using those spare buttons up. I haven't shaped it or anything like this the, because I just find it just so easy to just make a cover um, sort of like like a bag really. And uh, yeah, uh, I've put sandwich, I've put the lining, batting and the fabric. So it should keep... Um, the water bottle warmer but also you're able to use them straight away so i made that one i'm getting used to these bifocals now this fabric was some leftover fabric from some pajamas i made my middle daughter carly and i just put a bit of lace on just to print it up and there's another one these are all lined with scraps of fabric. This fabric I, I bought from Stitchy Bee. It was a cotton poplin and they made a skirt out of this. So yeah, and I've lined it with that fish fabric. I just can't get rid of that fish fabric, <laughs> no matter how hard I try. And then this one, you can actually shape because I've I've put a ribbon on, so you just tighten the bow at the front. And um, this is lovely. This is what I would call a brush cotton. But I think um, in the States and in Canada, they may call it flannel. Uh, but I actually bought this um, from Rainbow's End in Florida. A really big quilt shop I go to. That's it's in Dunedin on the west coast of Florida. 
so we always go to that quilt shop whenever we go florida and uh, i've lined it inside and i thought these would make nice little stocking fillers for christmas although that is a long way off i know but i've actually quilted this as well so it looks quite pretty when it's tied up into a bow um, again this one has got a bow on it and i've just done some quick free motion quilting and um, i just put some lace and some little gingham parts just to pretty it up and popped a bow on so yeah and then this is this was a prototype I tried to make them originally, um, I made the first one with like this uh, pillowcase opening, what I call a pillowcase opening, but um, I measured up the water bottle when it had no water in it. So of course it was quite a tight squeeze and I just thought it's just too dangerous really to faff about with and I backstitched a little drag dragonfly on, but... Um, I'm, I just think it's far easier to just do a bag really and then you just undo your buttons fill your hot water bottle up and uh, nice little cosy so those I'm going to put up for little stocking fillers for Christmas well it's a little bit early to talk about it I know but I just wanted to get some of these fabric scraps down now, as for sewing, um, in my last video, so I have to keep moving this fringe back, after the cutting of the finger incident, um, I, <laughs> I abandoned the project. So I don't know if you remember this fabric. I think I showed you this on my last vlog. It was a jersey I purchased from Sew Over It. This is showing up a lot lighter, actually, than what it is. This is more of a deeper... Uh, yellow and I think the colourway was called Sunshine um, on the Sew Over It website and I plan to make an Audrey top I've been wanting to make this Audrey top for some time so the other day I washed and prepared all this fabric and ironed it and laid it out and I, need, I hadn't got enough fabric I think I only ordered one and a half meters of this and it wasn't enough for the Audrey top because obviously there's the bow and there's quite it's quite involved so I um, have decided to make the gable top by Jennifer Lauren I've already made a gable top last year so um, yeah that's actually when I say I'm, it's not on my cutting table it's on my dining room table cut out so that's all ready to sew up this week. So I'll be able to show you the finished make on my next vlog. Okay, next work in progress as another sewing project. And this is a pinafore for my granddaughter who is three years old, but she'll be four soon. And it's called Sienna and Steffi. Okay, so I'll just show you the line drawings and it's this one here see i am intending to make now this was for world book day but unfortunately my granddaughter fell ill so the sewing project got put on hold so when i downloaded the pattern and i've forgotten who the pattern is by but i'll put the details down below um it was in german the it's in english as well but the measurements were by height but anyhow i emailed the the designer and uh, very helpful she sent me all the height instructions so i could convert you know in the chest and weight uh, the chest and waist so i can convert to the right size and I've then I had to um, trace round the pattern. It's a PDF uh, because you have to add a seam allowance 
because you have to do that with most European um, dress pa uh, patterns, sewing patterns. So I've done that. Um, and so this is all ready now. And the lining, I've done the lining as well. So yeah, this is all ready to go. Bit more stash busting there because these la this lining is left over from when I've made skirts and things. I never throw anything away because you never know when it's going to come in useful. So hopefully this week I'll have two sewing make makes to show you for next time. Pop that over there. Um, and the last sewing project I've got to show you is a project bag I've made. Okay, this is quite a big one. So this is all clear plastic on the front. It's padded with the batting inside. This cherry fabric, I love this. This is some I bought from Walmart when I was on holiday a couple of years ago. And it was really reasonable priced. And zipper. And then this is just some other quilting fabric. I had I thought it was really pretty so that will keep my Q snap frame in there quite comfortably so I'll just pop that there so those are my sewing makes and I've got a finished knitted article to show you I don't know if you remember last time I was knitting the flax sweater for my grandson and I for, buy tin can knits And I was knitting it out of Style Craft Special. I think this is an iron weight. That's good. I couldn't get used to these glasses. Oh, yes, iron. Okay. This is the jumper. I won't hold it up too much because it'll just blow the lights. I mean, not blow the lights, but the lights will. The lighting goes funny, if you know what to see. <laughs> so, um, this is the flax jumper by Ten Can Knits. And it's got this, this is called garter stitch. But because you're knitting in the round, what you have to do to get this effect is you have to knit a row and on the next row you have to purl. Now you think, well, that's quite simple. And what I did is I put stitch markers either side of the patterning, which goes down the sleeve, to remind me on I had to do this. But I think... You can see there I've made one mistake there where I've actually knitted a row instead of purled. And I thought this would be really good TV knitting. Mm -mm, it wasn't because my eyesight at the time, my, my previous glasses um, weren't strong enough. And with knitting in black coloured wool, that's very difficult to see the stitches. And um, yeah... I, 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 it's easy to get carried away when you're knitting in the round to carry on knitting in the round and forget that you've got to purl a row so anyhow I think that's where I got up to last time so that's the stitch marker but now it's completed I did the sleeves a little bit longer because he does like long sleeves for some reason I think they like to push them up and uh, yeah, but I think next time I will knit him a size up. And my next knitted project, which I've nearly finished, is the Sea Glass Cardigan by Sarah Cook. And again, I'm knitting this in Stylecraft double knitting. And this colourway is called Heather. And if I bring it up closer, you will see it's quite, uh, it's a lovely um, colourway. I think it's called Heathers and the colourway is called Salmon. So, and you can see it's got like these lovely pinks and heathery purple colours. Yeah. yeah, and I've got my little charm on. Little mushroom. And it's just really, it was just to see where I was up to and then I managed to get the other sleeve finished so so I'm just knitting now the 
the ribbing for the collar of the cardigan and then I presume I'll pick up stitches down the side and knit the button band and buttonhole band and it's got this lovely pretty cabling pattern at the front I'll bring that a little bit closer and you can see that so this was knit top down it's all in one so I'll just show you inside there are actually no seams which is you know at first I thought that was you know there's two schools of thought some people aren't really bothered about sewing up and I'm not to be honest um, and it you know it can seem like an eon when you're knitting the whole body I knit on cables I just knit back to and throw um, but yeah it's knit up really nice so I like to I don't mind whether I knit top down top up or flat but um, once the main body's done I mean this you, you know you start on the sleeves and they fly off I didn't knit these on magic loop I knit these on DPN's double pointed needles four millimeters I've just got to wash and block so there we go nearly finished this and hopefully next time I talk to you we I can show you the finished article. Next work in progress is this tapestry and this is when I realized I needed glasses as you can see not all of it is quite as neat. I find the wall sometimes is quite loose if you know what I mean in the ply and then if you're sewing f for as you sew some of it goes tighter so I don't know it's hard to keep my tension really but this bit you can see where I haven't where I've had to struggle really and I found what I was doing as I was feeling with the needle the holes if you know what I mean to where I was going to make my next stitch so my partner's bought me this I won't show you it's, well see if I can bring it over it's huge I don't know if you can oh oh but anyhow he's brought me one of these if I'm just sort of show you that it's like a dentist's it's like an article out of a dentist's um out of a dentist room but basically if I can just bring the camera around you can see that this is like a magnifier and it had a ring light and so I started going great guns working on this um, let me see get that the right way so you can see this this part here is far better because I had the magnification I was so shocked when I actually um, put this under the magnifier because I could see missed stitches and oh so I'm really glad I've got this except that the bulb went and um, only use it three times and on the third time the bulb blew so we've had to send for a new bulb but the seller has kindly um, reimbursed us so so yeah we've been pleased with the service we've had and we've ordered a new bulb but that is the sunflowers and as you can see I've got to tighten it up it's on the scroll frame I've just got this little bit now to finish and this will be completed what I'm going to try and do is block it steam it to see if I can get it lay a bit flatter in places and then hopefully get that framed so yeah this was a kit I bought from Hobby Lobby 
oh it must have been four or five years ago um it's when i was going around my my father was poorly at the time and uh i think we had to stay a couple of nights just to look after him so i wanted something to do so i bought this kit and it was in a sale half price from hobbycraft it was from a company called hooked by design and i was actually hooking this it comes as a kit so you got this it's like i think you call it we call it hessian i think some people call it burlap and it had all the wools with it and it had the hook because the hook i've got for rug hooking is far bigger so it was a fine hook i really enjoyed this project i really did yeah so i'll just show you a little bit um, of me hooking this putting this together So this is the card and it's hooked by design now what she does is she just puts a wooden frame round however I know you shouldn't put glass put them in a glass frame because you want to see the texture however I can't quite make up my mind whether to put it in a glass frame you know or not or just have the plain wood i haven't made up my mind yet so but at the moment the shops the non-essential shops in the uk are closed and um i think i haven't looked at the roadmap we've all had a roadmap now published so basically the schools have already starting to go back and I think hairdressers will open on the 12th of April which is good news because of this unruly mop but also my middle daughter is an hairdresser and has her own business so that'll be good news for her but I'm not quite sure about when the non-essential shops open whether it's on the 12th I can't remember but I prefer to go out and uh, have a look at the frames. Um, or maybe I might pop into Wilkinson's Wilco's to see if they've got any frames there. But other than that, I'm just going to have to wait on a little while longer so I can get this, um, so I can choose a frame. So just of late, I have really felt like I wanted to hand sew. I do enjoy hand sewing and have done cross stitch in the past so I've decided I wanted to do a project which was full coverage so I looked at the heaven and earth design website and I'll put a link in down below and oh my goodness when you see the fantastic artwork on this website so i've chosen this design it's called the mini sea beacon it, the artwork is by jasmine beckett griffith and the charting 
for the cross stitch is undertaken by Michelle Sayetta. Now I may have said the surname wrong and I do, sorry, last name, and I do apologise if I have. But Michelle, um, she does this wonderful charting and yeah, I just fell in love with these designs. I've got a huge, I've, I've registered, I've got an account and now I've got a huge wish list. Now I have got lots and lots of threads. I mean it's, you know, this is just, I'd say one fifth of my threads. I've got an Ikea trolley and it's just full of embroidery threads, okay. So I thought, right, I'm going to start using these threads up. But when I actually, I think there's 82 colours, different colours in this project. And I think I only had, ooh, maybe 15 of the colours. So I had to, it took me a, nearly a day to order all the different threads I would need. And I went to this website. It's called Lakeside Needlecraft. There we go. It's showing back to front for me on the camera. But um, yeah, and what I like about this company is it's not far from me. It's in Sale, Manchester. So I like to buy local as well, so that's good. So I purchased the rest of my threads from this company. And I've dealt with this company before because I bought my Aida fabric from there. Okay, so um, everything's come. I don't know how they did this order. <laughs> Because it's a lot of, it's a lot of packing. And then the other night I just sat there and I've got these leftover. See, I've thrown nothing away. So, you know, I make cards and scrapbooks and things. So these pieces of cards are left over and I even saved those. Okay. So all I did the other night is sit there punching holes and threading my threads through ready for the big event so yeah so you can see these are the colors I'm currently using there's only three at the moment I'm using off these and then I purchased these boxes, A4 storage boxes, and these are all the threads. There's some in that box as well, but as you can see. So I've got them all now sorted. Okay, and there's the rest. Ooh, let's just pull them up a bit so you can see there's some beautiful colours I just love them these DMC threads and they see they're only the slight nuances in some of the colours you see and you think well how's that going to show up against another colour but they do you need them you see they're just very slight slight different colours so, yeah, really, I can't stop stitching at the moment. So, I'll show you. Now, I've joined on Facebook um, a Heaven and Earth design group. They're really lovely. They're really helpful. You know, you put a question on there and lots of people come back to you to give you some support. And these are, this is my I haven't put this on very well, but this is my progress so far. So this is my needle keeper, and I made that one myself. It was just a wooden, um, 
what you call them, ephemera, what I used for scrapbooking, and I just popped a magnet, magnet on for my needle keeper. The needles are John James, and they're size 26. Now, the some people call this Aida, or Aida, okay, um, and I believe it's named after the opera Aida, so... I ordered this from Lakeside Needle Crafts um, ooh, quite a while ago now. Now, when I thought of doing full coverage, usually most people who are doing these heaven and earth designs were actually using 25 count. So that means that there's 25 boxes or holes or something or threads to the inch okay and I knew my eyes wouldn't be able to cope with that so I thought I would go for an 18 count now what this will do is make my design bigger so there'll be one two three I think there's 400 stitches alone just in that little piece and that's how intricate these designs are and when I looked at the at the Facebook and people are actually putting photographs, uploading photographs of their finished designs. I mean, it's just like a piece of artwork. It really is. Oh. I've been working on this in the morning, okay, for an hour. And then doing some knitting on the, the cardigan. I like to change my crafts through the day. But I keep on airing to go back to work on this at the moment, which is nice. It's it's lovely just to sit there and think, well, you know, what would I like to do today? I want to do this or I want to do that. So, but I am trying to get um, my Boreal jumper finished and I want to start on my Marie Wellen cardigan. But yeah, so what I've decided to do is to split my vlogs up a little bit because not everyone is interested in cross stitch and quilting and not everyone's interested in sewing garments or knitting so i've decided that from now on i will do a vlog on my sewing for garments and knitting and crochet but for other items, such as for household and quilting, I will do a separate vlog. So um, that way people can choose which they want to watch. So there we go. I think that's everything I've mentioned. Yeah. Um, it's Mother's Day today in the UK. So happy Mother's Day. Um, I have had some plants and uh, chocolates, so that would be great to munch on. Not the plant, but the chocolates uh, while I'm stitching. And uh, yeah. So next vlog will be a sew sewist tag, which has been set up by Jen's Sew Room. I think it's Jen's Sew Room. Um, she was on about putting the tag together so that will be great fun so that will be next friday and then yeah hopefully i'll have a gable top to show you um and some more progress on my stitching so until then happy stitching bye <laughs>